dang, boy. We ain't got no bass in this one. Gosh, I was wrong. Oh, oh, that's the best kind of noise ever. All right, we're gonna have a surprise. How big is this fish? Oh, baby. Holy cow, y'all ready for this? What? This may be the most unique pond I have ever fished. I mean, look at this place. How's it going and welcome to Uncut, the series on my channel where I go bass fishing with the cameras totally uncut, teaching you guys everything I learned along the way and hopefully catching a few bass. The incredibly unique location I'm fishing today is Shady Grove Ranch in Pattonville, Texas, a property that's a part of private water fishing here in Texas. Now, as you can tell from the drone shot, this is not just one pond, but six almost identical square ponds. For many years, this ranch behind me was a catfish farm where they bred and raised catfish for sale to grocery stores and restaurants. But a few years back, a major drought caused all these ponds to dry up, which ended their catfish operation. But instead of refilling the ponds with water and catfish, the property owner decided to make it into a paradise for largemouth bass. So over the next few hours, I'm going to take y'all with me as I attempt to catch bass in all six of these ponds. Let's go. Actually, I'm going to start in this one over here. So pond number one is really what most of the ponds look like, and that is, like I said, a square with a ton of of aquatic vegetation. Honestly, a little bit too much. As a matter of fact, if, if it wasn't for my, my casting distance ability, I wouldn't be able to fish here because a lot of this stuff here is just totally choked out with grass. But I think the best two tactics for really what I'm, when I'm looking at all these ponds here, which is kind of funny, I can see them all from where I'm standing here, is that topwater frog is going to be the number one tactic even over the thicker grass. So I have the Strike King popping pad perch on a Mach 2 7.3 heavy. And then I have a Strike King cutter worm to just just swim in the openings between the grass in case these fish maybe are more uh, slower moving. They can't, you know, they're not, they're not as aggressive enough to eat a topwater frog. So I'm going to start here in pond number one. It's the closest one to the entrance to the property. Matter of fact, some forage I saw in this pond was some giant crawfish. They were fighting on the bank over there. I stuck my rod down. They, one of them bit the rod and I lifted them on shore and they're like, I'm talking the, the ones that crawfish boils that you eat. And it's like, dang, that was a full bite in one crawfish. That's how big those things were. So I know the bass in this pond at least have crawfish and I know all these were stocked with bluegill. So I'm going to make the assumption that all of them have crawfish and bluegill, but you know, maybe not. So this one here, relatively clear water as we work our way around probably half of it before I move to the next one. I'll give you guys more updates on, uh, you know, the conditions and, and stuff I'm seeing, but I'm going to start by throwing the frog until I get to some more uh, open water. Zing. Holy smokes. Nothing is cut out. Some stuff might be speed ramped to kind of get around boring sections, but it is mostly totally uncut. Now, when I when I make, you know, when I'm frog fishing around shallow stuff like this, which I, by the way, I think these ponds are pretty much even depth throughout the whole thing because they were they were farm ponds to farm catfish. So there's no need to have like a deep hole or an aerator. It's just kind of one relatively uh, standard shaped bowl um i'm pr you know where was i going with this totally fair oh talk oh, talking about the frog um i'm gonna focus on the areas slowly that have open water and then if i get past the open little sections uh to the matted grass i'm just gonna like reel the frog straight back to me and we're probably gonna catch a few fish today just reeling a hollow belly topwater frog almost like we're throwing it over a trash mat of like nasty, you know, snot grass and, and, and eel grass. So I'm past the openings. I'm literally just gonna reel the frog and stop it every once in a while. And you'd be surprised how fish can actually totally engulf a hollow belly frog as it's moving fast over something that they can't see through. Like, you'd be surprised. Holy cow, what a bomb. It's like a 50 yard cast. That is far. Now, one of the bummers about this property is that we got a lot of stickers, like seeds, in the grass here. Make it hard to walk. <clears throat> Probably should have worn, like, rubber boots. Although I don't even own a pair of rubber boots. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not really a fan of having the big camera here. I can't quite move as fast, but we'll try. We'll try to move fast. Reel the frog in here. Like I said, the property I'm at today is part of private water fishing. If you've never heard of it, it's a, 
It's an organization in Texas and Oklahoma right now that has over a hundred different properties you can fish. And I mean, I've probably fished 20 of them, 25, and man, they're, they're almost all good. Uh, they're all professionally managed. They come out here a few times a year and, and shock and, and stock forage if necessary. Uh, there's certain regulations for each body of water of, of taking out small fish, taking out crappie, that kind of thing. They're not all catfish ponds. There's tons of, of natural uh, reservoirs um, of, 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 you know, deep, clear water with trees and, and, and rocks, that kind of stuff. And like I said, they're all over Texas and Oklahoma. So this one here is just one of the brand new ones. They wanted me to come out here and test my luck. Uh, if you want to join private water fishing, I will leave the link down in the description. It's a really good, good, you know, club to join. If you want to fish bodies of water, have it all to yourself all day long. Nobody's stealing your spots, stealing your fish and a uh, good place to take kids out fishing for the first time. This property here might not be a good one to take somebody who's never caught a bass just because you know, you've got to cast far to get past all this grass and then set the hook really hard, but they've got plenty of properties. So like I said, I'll leave it down below. Let them know that I sent you. Nothing so far. You know what? These fish are probably grouped up to a certain extent. So I'm going to make a cast across the thick grass that way. Work my frog in relatively fast. It's also possible that, you know, it's, it's, it's like 90 degrees already that these fish are already in the deepest parts they can be, which would be unfortunate. Probably should have got here earlier. It's like 930. So probably should have started filming a little bit earlier in the day. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Where's my other rod? There it is. All right. Gonna grab myself a camera. We're gonna move on down. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, I'm gonna pop a, uh, I'm gonna pop a graphic on the screen showing y'all how many people watched my last uncut that were not subscribed. So if that's the case and you are not subscribed, hey, let's go ahead and join Team TRF, baby. We have a good time here on the channel. Catching bass for you guys. Ouch, there's a sticker in my sock. Ouch. And so seeds, those, those, those like arrowhead shaped seeds. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, it's 100% shallow, uh, deeper here. There's some bluegill beds. Oh, I should, I should totally catch some bass right here. Oh, am I recording? Yes, I am. Gosh, there he is. Oh my gosh. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. I saw him wake. <laughs> Bring it in. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. First fish of the uncut. Beautiful three pounder. Popping pad perch in his face. Look at that, boys and girls. That's awesome. Never going to say that's a bad time because it's not. That's a good time right there. Okay, so this fish right here is a bluegill eater. Y'all can't really see it. Maybe a drone shot can get it, but uh, there are some bluegills that are, that are spawning up on the banks here. And that fish was just chilling up shallow. I cast a little bit deeper than the bluegill beds, and that fish, I saw him cruise up to it. And again, if you're not watching your topwater frog in shallow water, you're going to miss stuff like that. You're going to miss a fish. Uh, you're going to miss the, the wake of a fish and maybe totally move that, the lure out of the strike zone because that fish isn't, isn't going to follow it forever. So you're going to have a, the best chance of catching one if you are watching. Come on, baby. So that's our first nice one, a little shallower than I was anticipating. But hey, I'll take it. Glad I have my 7.3 heavy rod because this is kind of heavy combat fishing here. And definitely this reel whips it out there. Holy smokes. Gosh, if I catch one, if I get a bite, it's gonna be this gonna be tough. Oh man. Check my GoPro. We're recording. We're looking good, baby. We are looking 100 percent good in the hood. You know what? Now that I've now that I caught one shallow and I see that they're the bluegills are spawning. Man, I don't even know if I want to make casts out in the middle. Cause it may, it may just be higher percentage to focus on the edge close to where the bluegill are spawning here. Because that fish did not care how hot it was. That fish was up shallow to feed on some gills. So that's what I like to see. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna focus on the uh, on the edges right here. 
and make shorter casts to where those fish might be. But you know what? If it's if it's constant depth, the the, the bluegill might not, not might not just be spawning here. They might be spawning kind of out in the middle as well. So we'll just have to we'll have to see. Have to wait and see. Let's make a cast down there. Kind of getting shallower here, closer to the bank. Do do do. Come on. Come on, Ribbit. Mr. Ribbit Frog. Probably won't get a second one from that area, but you never know. Now. now, one thing that is, is hot. It's hot, hot, hot. Put my AFCO hood on. Yeah, if y'all uh, don't own any AFCO sun shirts, you need to. I'm only wearing sunscreen today on my hands. Uh, a little bit on my neck just because, and then uh, my nose and, and ears and, and, and face, because this thing's got SPF 50. And, uh, man, I hardly ever get burnt wearing these things. As a matter of fact, I can't remember the last time I got burnt wearing one of these things. They're just super comfortable. People are like, oh, I can't wear long sleeve fishing. Yes, you can. These things are breathable. They feel awesome. Yes, it's hot outside, but you, you, know, you get used to it, and it, it protects your skin, so... If you're a mom or a grandma or somebody watching this and you want to get some good fishing clothing for uh, a loved one, give AFCO a try. And I've got a code, TRF2023. Saves you 15% on your order. How about that? How about that, baby? How about we catch another fish? Once I get to that corner over there, I'm going to try the cutter worm. But not yet. It's not cutter time yet. It is still froggy time. There we go. This is kind of going to be the pattern. I fish an area, make 10 or 15 casts, grab the camera, move on down. I really want to find the next good looking area that has bluegill beds. That's where the, that's where the bass going to be. They going to be feeding on them gills. Probably got a little too close to this area. We'll see. Oh, we're good. Again, gonna cast down the line. There's some openings here that I guarantee you bluegill are spawning around. If you have a lot of open water around bluegill beds, you know, a wacky rig, a fluke, a weightless, uh, you know, caffeine shad can be really good. But if you got a whole bunch of slop on the top of the water near the bluegill beds, Cannot be little frog. Little froggy froggy frog. Angle my chest mount a little lower. All right. Again, just casting to the edge. One of the parts about this job is that I, I, you know, I can't just go burn down the bank catching fish. I gotta set up the cameras and all that stuff. But it does allow me to fish for a living, so. Thank y'all, really appreciative. Especially for you who are subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you are a loser. I'm just kidding, you're not a loser, but I wish you would subscribe. Wish you would, that'd be fun. That would be a lot of fun. All right, enough talking. I'm sure somebody's already commented, this guy talks too much. This guy just shut up and fish. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten that over the years of this job for like a video where I'm like, it's a sit down video. I'm talking about a lure. This guy, this guy talks too much. Well, that's kind of the whole point of this video. So I'm talking, it's kind of what I gotta do. But also that's what, uh, that's what uncuts are all about as well is I've gotta, I've got, I've got to keep the keep the audience going, keep you guys entertained. You know what? You know, I saw a lot more bluegill there where I caught that fish. I'm not, oh, gosh! Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I don't know if I stung him or not. So we're going to get my frog back out there. Oop, uh-oh. I, I, I think I might have stung him. That means, like, I got the hooks in his face a little bit, and usually that 
kind of scares bass away. Dang it. That one was nicer as well. Man, pond number one's got some good ones. Shoot. Okay. So we got one bite also out here on the outside edge. It's kind of the deal with frog fishing though, is that you're not gonna hook every single fish that bites. It's rare. It's rare that you have a day where it's just like landed fish, landed fish, landed fish. Especially in stuff like this where they've got to come up through it. They're not always accurate with where they uh, put their mouth. But sometimes, man, it is, it's wild how good they are at it. And you're probably wondering why I didn't go back with the worm. It's just, it's too, the grass is too thick there. I don't, I don't think I'd be able to on my super light Texas rig worm to get it where that fish was. <laughs> I would totally be throwing a buzz frog right now. Little strike king gurgle toad. If I didn't have uh, such a long cast to make. It's a very, very light top water. It's hard to, hard to get a long cast with that. Man, almost had two big ones. I gotta tighten my drag. <sighs> Sorry, that's totally locked. I don't think it had slipped. That was just my mind telling me that. Okay, fish is not there. Let's keep moving. Keep on moving. I almost wanna walk down and put my, my worm rod on like the other bank. <laughs> just to stop having to lug two around. God, okay, okay. Fish is there. Oh, no, my braid. Oh, come on. Oh, no. What the heck? This is what braid does sometimes. It, it gets all kinds of looped up when you set the hook and it flies back towards you. It just kind of creates like a like a, a wind knot. And you gotta take it, when you get a braid backlash, a braid wind knot, you gotta take it slow. Otherwise it's gonna tie itself in knots. And the more you pull at it, the more it just uh, gets itself deeper in a pickle. So, gotta be slow, especially when the knot is relatively loose. Use your fingernails. There we go, I'm pulling it out. All right, got that one. Nope, don't pull on that one, Tyler, bad idea. See, I told you this is uncut. This is fishing in the real world. Oh gosh. Some kind of big bug. All right. Got it. All right. Let's get this frog. Make sure the hooks are all free. They were not. I don't really have a number for how many fish I want to catch at a pond before I move to the next one. But, I don't know. Five, six, maybe. I assume there's plenty of fish out here. Come on. Come on now. You kidding me? Are you are you kidding me? I did not catch the fish. Sometimes you gotta get really slow when the fish is there, when you know he's probably still around. Man. Lame. Alright, gonna continue the fan cast. So I made two casts shallow. Now I'll make one a little deeper. And this technique here really only works with a frog that has a, a good build to it where the hooks are not poking out at all. Like a lot of frogs out there um, have inconsistencies in how they're built. So the hooks on some of them out of the box are kind of like poking out, you know, a millimeter or two. And some are, you know, ultra close. I don't know if it's manufacturer's fault or what it is, but you want to find a frog that can really be weedless, totally weedless as it's retrieved. I mean, I'm pulling it over all this stuff here. And if any of the hooks were sticking out, it would have, it would have caught some stuff by now. So the pad perches for the most part out of the box are pretty, pretty good about the hooks, you know, laying right next to the hollow belly. Okay, another cast. 
cast to a little lily pad patch. Now, you, you'd think in, in a field full of milfoil that a fish would be sitting on a little lily pad patch. That's kind of common bass fishing thought process, but I've made cast to every lily pad deal that I've found and haven't gotten bites on them yet. Just shows you that bass don't always read the same book we're reading. They wrote the book and then they decide to not follow the book. Well, one thing's for sure, I've gotten no bites in open water as I thought I would. So it is hot, the bass have moved to underneath the grass, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna let my cast get that far. At least not in this pond. Maybe, maybe in that pond or in that pond, but not in this one. As I say that, I, <laughs> I let my cast get too far. That's okay. There's a nice hole in the grass. Oh gosh, got him, got him. That was cool. I saw that fish wake on it. He waked on it in relatively open water. Oh, stop it. Stop the gosh, dang it. I'm gonna grab you MLF style. Ice cream cone, except not quite. I'm gonna go with like a, if you're, if you're at uh, Baskin Robbins, they gave you a good healthy, a good healthy scoop. Still a one scooper, but good healthy scoop. Thank you, friend. Okay, well, that's a bass in relatively open water. I wonder, if the cutter worm could catch them there. You know what, I'm just gonna, just gonna, this is dumb of me. I should try something different. I should try something different to all I can. Help myself discover, yep, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stop being a dummy. And you know what, after, after a few casts, if I don't have one yet, that's fine, I tried something new. Try something new, I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna, do. I'm gonna try something new. Great. Check my GoPro. Uh oh, we got a water spot. Water spot alert. Okay. Zingo. Now, nope. a little backlash there. My first time casting this combo in a while, so I wasn't quite ready for it. All right. Holy cow! Oh, my first. Well, it could have been a. That could have been a bluegill. But either way, he messed up my worm. Pulled down my trousers. First cast. We're gonna we're about to find out what that was. To find out. Gosh, Tyler, I guess this one can't be whipped like the frog combo can. I gotta set this thing up a little differently. I think I was also throwing like a half ounce vibrating jig on this thing last time. Oh well, let's my lure fall to the bottom. Popped it off the grass, let it swim. Nope, not quite open water enough. Looks like caught some grass. Let's try this direction. There we go. Just gotta thumb the spool. And I'm rigging my rigging. When I'm swimming my cutterworm, I like to keep my rod tip up a little bit kind of keeps that worm up in the column mm, and as that swims that looks so juicy oh gosh once again okay I'm, I'm adjusting my brakes now uncut no cuts how about that how about that y'all get to see me get backlashes it's no fun come on swimming worm the worm all right, that worked. Started to get, started getting backlashy. This line is probably also old and has been sitting in my truck in the heat for a month. So that's my that's my excuse. All right, no fish on those few casts, but I kind of have some confidence to keep trying it. Gonna restart the clip here. I do that every once in a while just to make sure my files don't get corrupted because I don't want to have a long, long, long clip. And then I find out, uh-oh, file corrupted. Too bad. Ooh, I don't like that as an amp pile. Ooh, but I do like this. 
I do be liking what's coming up here. Oh my goodness, hey, look at this. Look at that. Big old crawdaddy. Dead. Deceased. No more. I'm really in the open now. Yeah, nothing. Let's go ahead and cast on the edge more. These fish do not seem to be uh, anti-aggressive. What's the word I'm looking for? Lethargic. <laughs> Sometimes I'm better at using uh, like a double negative than finding the actual word. Yeah, these fish definitely are aggressive, so I can retrieve the frog pretty fast. Which helps me cover water. So I'm not against that. Still kind of want to work it relatively methodically around the the good looking edges. It's just so cool to fish a body of water like this that nobody else is on. I don't gotta talk to nobody. I get all six of these catfish ponds to myself. It's pretty fun. I'm just waiting for the time that I'm reeling in and one explodes on it, because it's gonna happen, I promise you. Now, I also bet that getting here earlier in the day would have resulted in a little faster action. So I bet this water gets pretty hot. These fish start to hang underneath the cover. Man, I really want to punch. There's just, there's, there's, you know, two feet under there. That's enough to punch, I think. Me thinks. Make a cast down here. Yeah, I think in terms of the length of this video, I'm only going to have time to, you know, fish one little quarter, maybe, of the, uh, the pond. A little more than a quarter of each pond. All right, one final cast at this area over lily pads. Now, well, unless I, unless I do that, unless I do that, like a straight doof. Y'all are really seeing the problems that I've had today. Can't hide them in this series. All right, here we go. Zynga. I'm gonna catch one here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna back away from the camera so I get a good thumbnail for when I do catch one. We got a little, we got a grass point. It's got a little opening on it with lily pads on the edge of both the opening and the milfoil. How? Fish busted over there. Man. Okay. I'm gonna grab the cutter worm and make a cast. And I'm probably getting away from the camera here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna make a cast out into the great beyond. And retrieve. Man, nothing. We got nothing. First cast with this thing I had a fish. I think it was a bluegill, if I'm being honest. I think it was a gill of blue. It's interesting, I've not seen any other crawfish. Those were the only two crawfish I saw when I was filming my intro. Not sure where the rest of them went. Maybe they are buried in the mud. All right, let's keep going. Goes to show you that, you know, private fishing ponds are not always like super easy. Ouch, ow, ow, I got, ow, I can't walk. Hold up, hold up, I got stickers. Ow, so many of them at once. How did that happen? Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Get out of my shoe, please. I gotta pick up, my, pick up my feet as I walk. How about that, huh? How about that? There we go. Let's fix my frog. There we go, we're good. Make a cast here. Now, so far, I've not been impressed with the numbers at this pond. I assume we're gonna kinda get a different story. Every pond we fish, All right, let's see about this one. It's cast right down the edge. 
That bass was just cruising this edge, so maybe there's some more. Usually I like to try to dissect a, a pond by understanding the topography, which, which area is deeper, where are the good cuts and creek channels. Man, I don't think in this kind of pond there's any of that. This is just straight up farming. We are playing Farmville over here. Is that game still on, on, uh, on Facebook? Farmville? I, th I thought Farmville was on Facebook. Oh, I'm, I'm crooked. I'm all kinds of crooked. A lot of open water here. Gosh, there we go. Oh, come on. Get out of there, please. Oh, I got a whole clump of weeds. Do I still have a fish? Yes, I do. Still got one. Good. Bring it in. Bring it in. Beautiful. All right. Did not have him by much, though. I mean, that fish was hooked just in the corner. I wasn't coming off, though. was well hooked. Beautiful two-pounder. I'll take him. All right. So, got to open water and got a fish. That bite, though, was not aggressive. That bite was a little bit of a... A little bit of a swirl, silent swirl as they call it. Okay. Well, I think honestly, I, I try to, like I said, dissect bodies of water and find patterns. I don't know if we're gonna necessarily find a pattern in ponds like this. And I'm sure ponds, some of you guys fish out there that are kind of monotonous, they kind of look the same everywhere. There might not be a pattern. So you just kind of got to fish everything. I understand that maybe fish are more pelagic and they're moving more with the, the bait fish and the forage than they are moving with, uh, with or not, than they are moving, or what do you call it, living around cover. It's very similar to uh, fish in clear bodies of water, like clear lakes, Ozarks type stuff. Oftentimes those fish are more focused on following around the bait fish, you know, especially herring bodies of water. Carol in the Carolinas, they're more focused on following around the herring than they are. Gosh, there's one. Oh yeah, big one. That's a bigger fish right there. And he is swimming at me. Gosh, holy cow. Oh my gosh. Got the hook, yeah, there we go. Okay, make sure we get the, uh, get the thumbnail. Holy cow. Oh, okay. Oh, get out of there, please. Don't get off. Don't get off. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Okay. There we go. And bring yourself in here. Bring yourself in. I'm not gonna boat flip you or bank flip you because you've got a lot of grass on you. Got a lot of grass. Beautiful. All right. Three pounds of fish and five pounds of grass. Awesome. As you can see, y'all can tell, that one got it. That one out there in open water got the ribbit down the mouth. Oh, it's exhausting getting a fish in. At least he had it hooked well, and that fish was not coming off. Thank you, fish. Just the three and change. Okay, so just like I had thought, the fish are going to be a little bit schooled up. And as Jordan Lee says, they ain't school. We got to find me a school fish. Chesty's looking fine. Sony's looking fine. Yeah, y'all got to kind of see some of the, the thumbnail process. I don't even know if I'm using that thumbnail. It could have been bad for all I know. But uh, oftentimes there's a, a prolonged hook set or a, a fourth, fourth hook set into, into a fish to you know make it look good for the camera. Because that's part of YouTube nowadays is uh, the content can be fantastic. But if the, if the delivery, as in the whole deal, whole shebang, thumbnail, title, description, if the delivery is not good, no one's gonna see the content. So we're kind of entering into the, the clickbait per se phase once again, where you gotta get people to, to view your title thumbnail and wanna watch the video, but you gotta do it in a way that's tasteful, in a way that, that tells the story that, that, that isn't, isn't lying. It's not like, you know, 15 pound bass, fishing, fishing for 17 pound bass and then you don't catch any 17 pound, I mean, I guess we're always fishing for 17 pounders, but you gotta do it in a tasteful manner. 
And that's what I try to do here on the channel. Okay, we're gonna just fish this little corner right here. Once I round the bend and make a few casts, we're gonna say sayonara to, to pond number one. Cause I feel like this has been good enough here. I feel like we've... Gosh, dang, man. Oh, like a cow. Get out of there. Get out of there. You're not gonna dig me down this time. There we go. Okay, okay. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. I caught the fish on the dang flip. That's what I call some good old fashioned Texas milfoil. I think it's milfoil. I'm bad about that. I told y'all I'd eventually learn all these grasses. And I do sometimes. I know sometimes. That's a, what I do know is that's a healthy, chunky bass right there. I mean, that's like a, that's a good looking fish. Thank you, friend. This is fun. We found him. We found him screwed up. And now that I've caught, was that two or three? Yes, two in uh, open water here. I could keep throwing the frog around. What I'm gonna do though, well, first off, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit, get a slightly different angle at what I'm doing here. And then uh, I'm gonna cast the worm in these open areas here. There we go. Oh gosh, I'm about to, I'm about to smoke one. That's a straight up inhale one right here. Come on. Come on, buddy. Swimming worm. There he is. I told y'all. I told y'all. Oh, got off. He was, he was swimming at me the entire time. So I didn't really have a good chance to set the hook into much. That's all right though. Just goes to show me they're around. As I get a backlash on my next cast. How about that? Mm. Yeah, this line is definitely old. Should have, I should have stretched it before I uh, fish with it today. Oh, and I'm also, my eyeballs are sweating. Oh, I'm, I'm so hot. Oh. Okay. Maybe hot, but I'm not getting sunburned. There we go. Beautiful. Let's fall a few seconds and start the retrieve. Just a slow swim. Only thing happening is the tail of that worm is kicking. That's so funny that my hookup ratio in this little spot's been better on the frog than it was on the worm. Oh for one on Mr. Squirmy Wormy. Bugs around me. It's definitely only four feet up. Gosh, that was what a, what a horrible hook set. Man, that was jank. That was about the worst hook set I've done in ages. It looked ugly. At least that fish wasn't big, I don't think. Okay. We tried. We tried the cutter. I have one hooked. That's all that matters. Y'all just want to see frog content. I know. I know you do. Let's keep on moving. We're going to leave the cutter worm right here and just throw the frog. Because who needs to cut any worm? We got lots of bluegill. Uh oh. We're about to smoke one in this corner. Watch and learn. Yo, this real bombs. This re- oh. Got him. Oh, I'm just not a fan that I hooked one all the way across the corner. Because now, oh, come on. Oh, man, milfoil is thick stuff. Because uh, now I messed up the entire corner here for any other fish. That was bad on my part. A little something y'all can learn from what just happened there. Is that I, so yeah, great, I caught one. Success. But, oh, come on, buddy, buddy, chill, Mega. That was chesty, we're a little wet. But what happened there was, now I've totally disturbed the entire corner. I should have been making shorter casts to start. Maybe pick off some fish that were closer to me, but instead I casted all the way over the whole thing. And, you know, caught a fish. That is the whole goal of what we do out here, but probably could have caught another one in that corner. 
but I've more than likely ruined it, disturbed it too much. We got water on here now, how about it? Let's still give it another try though. It's possible the fish is just in this corner confused. That's what happens when you set the hook real hard. Braid digs into itself. Okay. There we go. Oh, oh, I was wrong. I was so wrong. Come on now. Had a fish blow up on it. Wow. That fish was so stinking shallow. I think I see a, I think I see a fish up there that doesn't look like a bass. It looks like, a, it looks like a catfish. Even though they, I don't think they put any more cats in here. Oh, there's a big one. There's a big one. There's a big one. Oh my gosh. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, come on. Gosh. What a nice fish. Oh, you're a bluegill eater, my friend. You eat bluegills. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so much stinking fun. Yeah, they're in this corner. That's, that's really why I say all the time in pond fishing is you gotta keep moving. You gotta keep yourself moving down the bank because these fish are gonna be schooled up in, in most ponds out there. And so if you can just cover water with a top water to start vibrating jig, spinner bait, eventually you'll find where the fish are and you can slow down. And man, they're in this side, they're in this corner. What am I doing? All right, now I'm probably gonna get a backlash. This cast, nope, we're good. <sighs> man, that's how you can tell they're bluegill bed eaters because there's just multiple in one area and wrecking the grass didn't seem to mess up the fish that was up there shallow feeding. That's awesome. That was so stinking cool. Let's go, reach out the clip. Okay. Oh gosh, darn it. Darn it, Janice. Man, what a cast. Man, what a cast over the kind of scattered-ish area off of this corner. I will make a few casts over the super thick stuff in the corner, because I've already caught two in this corner, so I, I would assume there's more staging in the grass of the corner, but I do want to fish some of this scattered stuff for a second. Oh, this is fun, man. This is not a bad time. Oh, once again, dang it, why did I make such a long cast? Because now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna catch one and mess up the whole deal. Well, I'll get your heart pumping, baby. Seeing big old swirl up shallow. That'll get your heart pumping. And we're just one catfish pond in. We are just one pond in. I gotta take these stinking sunglasses off and wipe my face again. It is so hot. This is exactly why I head north for the summer. That's why I go to New York, Minnesota, Michigan. Mmm. Because, yeah, you might sweat a little bit up there, but not really. I mean, I might break out of sweat at four o'clock in the afternoon while I'm, you know, reeling a crankbait in, in dead calm conditions. But I mean, man, the rest of the summer, into the fall, it's just the best. So that's, that's where I'm going next. For those of y'all who followed the channel, y'all know that I go up north every summer and soon after filming this video, I don't know about posting it. I'll probably already be in New York when I post this video. I'll be at uh, Cayuga Lake. Two fish, obviously bluegill eaters that were up shallow and then nothing. So what I'm gonna do here after this cast, so I'm just gonna spend a few more minutes walking the bank. And because I just got two that were practically in open water just around some bluegill beds, uh, I see that the bank is also open that way. So there's most likely blue, bluegill beds as we work that way. I'm gonna shut this camera off right here and just go chest mount. So chest mount, here we come. And uh, we're gonna walk with just the frog this way. Try to get ourselves, oh gosh, there's something spooked right there. Something spooked right there. Just gonna walk this way 
and make casts along the edge. Because that seems to be the high percentage spots. Seems to be where the bass are. And I want to fish where the bass are. Don't know about y'all. Oh yeah, oh, there's bluegill all in this area. No wonder there was bass here. Uh, that's the most bluegill I've seen all morning. Probably our best chance of catching big ones. I think the biggest ones are the, the ones feeding on gills. And this is what I, what I do when I'm not filming, which is rare, but it's just, man, walk the bank as fast as possible, just hitting high percentage key stuff. Here on this channel, I try to teach you guys about efficiency, catching the most fish possible in the least amount of time. And uh, this is one of those ways that I'm efficient by discovering where they are and replicating it. You know what? They're going to be in the corner. They're going to be in that corner. Let me get down there. It's like every 15 feet, I got to pick out one of these things out of my shoe. Ooh, I just stepped in a nice cow patty. Nice. It's actually a little bit deeper here too, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Ordinarily, I'd say yes. Deeper cut banks are better, but if they're, if they're feeding on bluegill and the bluegill are spawning up shallow, not sure. Also, the water was really clear over there. Water's actually kind of dirty over here. There are lots of cows on this property, so I'm, I'm wondering if the cows get in the water on this side, or they have today. Because yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot dirtier water. I can't see but four or five inches, even though we're in the same, same pond. Shoot, man. Okay. Well, I'm not really feeling dirty water. Oh, and every 15 feet, man, pick out sticker birds. Okay. But you know what? I've already come this far. I've got to come to the corner. Just to see. Just to see what we got. Okay, yeah, water's way dirtier over here. Uh, from what I know, my 12, 13 years of bass fishing is that Fish will often find clear water when they can, as opposed to dirty. Makes feeding easier, breathing for them easier, so. Yep, I'm sure this corner is good, except that the cows have made it dirty. So we're gonna go back, collect our other rod and our camera, and we'll see you guys at pond number two. Now, pond number two is a little bit different. We have, as you can tell, some cattails right here, a little bit deeper water close to the bank. I'm seeing about two and a half to three foot there. But really, the, the middle of the pond is, is almost identical. Matter of fact, I'm gonna zoom in here. Maybe y'all can see, maybe you can't. It's mostly just totally matted grass, a few holes like right there, a few, a few more pads in this one, but like that whole side over there is totally matted. So I'm gonna start on this side and then work my way and fish these holes in the uh, in the cattails. And I feel like that's probably my best way to go. I, I'm not feeling as good about this one. I don't, as a matter of fact, pond number three, y'all wait for that one. This one looks absolutely delicious. Looks like I'm fishing Okeechobee. So I'm gonna try to get through this one pretty quick here. Try to catch two or three fish for you guys. Who knows? Maybe they're small in here. Maybe they're big in here. I, I'm not sure. But if, if they stocked them all at the same time, I would assume that the size is about the same in every pond. It's definitely less open water to fish. Luckily, we had a few, few kind of hazy clouds pop up. That's nice for the movement. Very nice for the movement. Not against that. Like I said, there is an opener, opener area over there, but there's no like opening on the bank for bluegill to spawn. It's kind of just, it's just open from this stuff. I don't see any juicy things worth fishing down there. Oh, uh, uh, a little bit of a boil. 
little bit of a Susan Boyle. Okay, nothing there. Let's go for a bomb that direction. Uh-oh. <coughs> Someone comment, bless you, please. Hey, our next, our next fish catch. We'll do the comment challenge. For those of y'all who were watching, well, there's two comment challenges. One is to comment, bless you, in different languages. Uh, we'll do a different comment challenge here in a second, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm working this frog over matted milfoil, and I'm not really... Not really getting much there. Last cast right here, and I'm gonna move down that direction. This pond definitely looks juicier, per se. It's got, it's got better looking grass, clearer water, a little more depth, but I'm not sure if it actually has more fish in it. That first one had a lot of bluegill, which leads to a good, healthy bass population. All right. We are not in the mood to waste time today, so let's grab our other rod, our camera, and head down that way. Like I said, y'all should wait. Pond three is gonna be sick. Oh yeah, look at that pond. Holy cow, I can't wait. Get me out of this one. Get me out of two and into three. And catch us a few bass. I mean, you can see from the chest mount angle here, it's just total matted grass. I'm sure these, honestly, I'm sure these ponds, I'm going to come back here in like January. Oh, I'm sure the vibrating jig and lipless bite just goes nutty when there's not a whole lot of matted grass out here. Oof. Oof, I bet these places go dumb. They go dumb, dumb. But I mean, like, I can tell just by looking at it, this is all a canopy here. Like, I'm not throwing a frog over uh, vegetation that has nothing underneath it. It's, it's totally got stuff underneath. It's just does it have fish underneath? I, I don't know. Dang, boy. We ain't got no bass in this one. About to make 50 yard. Gosh, I was wrong. Oh, oh, that's the best kind of noise ever. That's the best noise ever. And that fish is on there. Oh my gosh, how am I going to get him out? Holy cow, I gotta oh, straight up pull this milfoil in. Come on, get in. Oh, he's still there. He's still there. I felt the head shakes. I can't tell how big he is though. Ugh. Sometimes it's good to get the fish in grass because the fish can't shake. Fish is kind of the head, the head where the hooks are, of course, is, is stuck. Oh my gosh. Holy cow, this milfoil. You can also take a break when you have a fish hooked like this. Ugh, because again, he can't shake. Can't get the grass off. Oh my gosh. Literally had to make the longest cast I could into open water. Probably the only area that's not choked out there. And I got this one. All right, we're gonna have a surprise. How big is this fish? How big is this fish? Can I stick my hand in here? Find out for myself. Oh, he's there. Oh, that's a nice one. Get some grass off. Thank you for protecting my fish. Oh yeah, oh, that's a good one. Oh, baby. Holy cow, y'all ready for this? Oh yes. Holy cow, that's a six pounder. What? Oh my gosh, I, want to, I got an Instagram story of this. Holy cow. 12 pounds of grass, six pounds of bass. Big ins here, baby. Oh my gosh, wow. For this place to have, I mean like, they must have, oh gosh, they must have, they must have stocked some big ones if that's, one of the fish in here, holy cow. That fish is like, I mean, that's a, that's a good six pounds. I'm gonna run real quick back to my truck to get my scale. I'm gonna go with like 634, 679, dang. Holy smokes, what a giant. Okay, we're bringing you back, buddy. Well, my goodness, boys and girls, straight up biggins here, seven pounder. 
Oh my gosh. All right. Let's get a selfie real quick. Now the problem is I can't really release this fish right here. There's too much grass. So I'm going to have to go down here where there was an opening to release it. All right, big Bertha. I will see you later. Adios, you going to swim away? Probably shouldn't have done that, but she'll find her way. There she goes. There we go. I put that fish through a lot. Holy smokes. A seven pounder. Still got seven pounds of grass on my, my frog here. Oh my gosh. That was, that was so much larger than I thought it was going to be. I didn't even know they had bass this big <clears throat> in these ponds. Like I'm not, I'm not lying when I say I was not expecting a seven pounder. Well, you know what? I said one bass and we'll go to pond three, but this pond seems to have big ones. So we're going to spend a second. I've definitely winched on my line though. Just got to check my rod, make sure we're all good. <sighs> Tighten down my reel. Handle bent at all. A little bit bent. I mean, I was stinking winched on that guy. All right, let's get this grass back in the water and give ourselves, you know what? I'm going to move down a little bit. Holy cow. Okay, we are to the area that I got that bite over there. I can make a little bit easier of a cast to that area now. I'm still in shock. That's bananas. Holy cow. I mean, I knew, I knew it was bigger than anything I'd caught so far. Just because I could tell when I'm pulling on, I felt the big head shakes. Oh, that's a testament to my equipment right there. Mach 2 rod, 7.3 heavy, Mach 2 reel. We've got some 65 pound... Seagar Smackdown braid to a Strike King pop and pad perch. The same one we've been fishing all day, by the way. It's only lost, I think, two strands of skirt. So that's how you can tell it's a good, good product. As always, I have all my tackle linked in the video description. Y'all have been around know this, but those are affiliate links. So if y'all are shopping on Tackle Warehouse ever, click those links down there. It'll track your whole purchase to, uh, to my name and helps the TRF channel continue to grow. So whether you're buying one pack of baits or a trolling motor, if you could click through any of those links, it really doesn't matter which one. And they will link you uh, to the website where you can make your cart and you're good to go. And I am making my cart right now full of giants. Holy cow. Oop. Oh, little guy. Little guy, don't really want to catch him. Anyways, I'd have to pull him through 17 miles of, of grass. I would rather just catch uh, big ones. There we go. What a cast. Holy moly. I need a water break. Should have brought a water bottle. It's at the car. Oh, that was intense. There we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, I tried to water ski him water ski him across the top so he wouldn't get stuck and that happened. You can't see, you can't reel fish in that fast. You can reel them in fast, but not like that. Okay. That cast I just made was over some, some matted stuff. I bet you in this pond at least there, maybe it's, maybe it's deeper at this pond in the open areas. And so the, the fish are sitting in the cooler water that's deeper and uh, they're coming up to eat it. That's probably what's happening. Again, I'm going to get drone shots to, sh to show you guys all of these ponds I'm fishing and where, I where I'm catching fish. Lots of drone footage today. Man, a ponds like this, long casts are so crucial. And good casting form and the right equipment gets the job done every time. And I really wish that I could like soak a drop shot out there, but it's just way too far and a spinning rod couldn't get a fish. I, I'd break off trying to winch a fish through this grass, but that's really what would catch the giants that are in that, in that opening out there. A little drippy shot. Come on. Get off of there, please. I hate when this happens. Well, I didn't that didn't solve it. I just got it worse. It's going that way, and that's going that way. Okay. 
All right, last cast to that hole. Oh wait, comment challenge. Hey, da -da 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 -da. comment challenge today. I gotta think about this for a second. Today we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna fish pond three from, <laughs> from this side while I think about the comment. Um, comment challenge today, we're gonna comment your favorite, uh, your favorite brand of chips today. So like Doritos, Fritos, uh, Flavor Blasted Goldfish, any kind of snacky chip thing. Comment below your favorite one. And if, uh, if maybe some nostalgia with it, you know, if it's uh, if it's a fishing trip and you and your buddy, you know, you always bring, I don't know, Funyuns or something, or or uh, I'll even throw uh, pork rinds in there. Comment below your favorite snack. It can be fishing related or not. Maybe y'all were playing soccer as kids and uh, your mom always brought stinking bugles, you know? Comment below. And my battery is currently overheating on this camera, so we're gonna put a pause to this one and go chest mount for the remainder of pond number two. Yeah, it's getting it's getting hot outside, and even even not filming 4K, my camera likes to overheat. So we're gonna give it a second to cool down as we just kind of poke around here, and I'm just gonna fish the openings that I can see in this pond. Man, I am shocked that there was already a seven pounder in this pond. I'm gonna have to ask private water fishing guys if if they know if they stocked any in here that were like three to four pounds. Cause I mean, you can only grow a bath at a max, like two pounds a year. I don't think this place was, fill, was, was, uh, was filled up and stocked, you know, three years ago, four years ago. I think it was like two years ago. Oh man, that's fun though. To know that that kind of quality is in here. Yeah, that's awesome. No complaints from me. There we go. Once again though, this is exactly what I do on, on ponds and lakes. I figure out what the fish are doing. I just had three bites, including a giant on a hole out in the middle. So I'm gonna focus on any holes that I can find in the grass. Now I think that area over there was like the deepest possible in this whole pond. It looks like it at least. By the way, the grass was not growing at all there. And any other holes that I see up around us here, like there's some holes out here. It's just, I can still see the bottom. So yeah, the, the grass is not growing super thick here, but I'm not seeing a deep hole like I was there. All right. Oh my goodness. How do these deals get in my shoe? Son of a biscuit, man. So many of them. So many of them. They're so pokey too. I know they're all just seeds. But they're annoying. And they hurt. And I'm in pain. Pick up your feet, Tyler. Pick up your feet when you walk. Ouch, gosh. Literally picked up my feet there and still got two. Still got two of them. Ah, oh, there's not much here, man. There's just, there's just pads and matted grass. Once again, though, cast to any holes I can see and reel it fast over the rest. My frog feels heavy. Here, a little bit of water. Come on now. Oh, heard a bluegill pop. It's a good sign. Yeah, so like I talked to you guys about a few minutes ago, I'm heading to New York. This video will launch when I'm in New York, most likely. And uh, I'm excited. I'm gonna be at Cayuga, then gonna fish around the Cayuga area for a few days, maybe sink in Oneida, some lakes around there, maybe some Finger Lake, Skinny Atlas, that kind of thing. And then I will fish upstate i'm talking the border of canada the saint lawrence river i'm going back baby and man there is some amazing smallmouth and largemouth fishing up there the largemouth frog fishing oh hold up i just saw a fish bust out there got him Ugh. not a big one but he's coming in the largemouth fishing in new york is unreal 
so many three to six pounders. Oh, come on now. Thank you. And then the smallmouth fishing, so many four to seven pounders. I mean, like, it's unbelievable how many big ones there are. All on beds, too. All the smallmouth, at least. The largemouth should be done spawning. Oh, man. Little guy, you wore me out. You're wearing me out, buddy. Go back to where you came from. I thought I would bring my kayak today, but I thought, you know what? What if everything is just totally choked out with grass? I can't even pedal. And my, my native is a pedal drive kayak. And that's the case. So I'm, if I had brought it, I would not have even launched it. Would have done this uncut like I did today. Ugh. I'm gonna show you all a drone shot right here of kind of what I'm aiming for. Cause you probably can't see it from my chest mount of what these little holes look like where the grass just grows less. With my polarized sunglasses on, if y'all are out wearing polarized sunglasses, when you're fishing in general, but especially bank fishing in clear water, man, you can see so much. If I'm not wearing them, I miss so many opportunities. And they protect your eyeballs from the sun. So I'll get you a good pair of sunglasses. Let's find a few more of these things. A few more, a few more holes. Kind of sparse here. Ooh, something just busted right there. Gosh dang it. Man, every time I step in this thicker grass, they get me. That's how they, that's how they pollinate. That's how they move. Dummies like me moving these seeds around. Now, you know what? Oh, this is my last cast here. Well, besides the, uh, I'm gonna make a few casts again at the opening that I caught the big one. Just because there's so many fish that I got to bite in there. Here's the deal though, it's just, it's, it's, it's so monotonous to fish. All these flats of grass. I don't think it's totally worth my time, especially if I'm trying to cover all six ponds. So, let's keep on moving. Hmm, pond three does look good. It also looks shallow though but there's a lot of open water out there near those cattails. That does pique my interest. Oh, my legs are so itchy, I should've worn pants. I was just thinking, it's gonna be 90 degrees today. I'm not wearing pants. Nah, I should've worn pants. See, like right there. That kind of thing right there, little, little hole. I don't know, looks good to me. All right. That'll do it for pond number two, folks. Let's get our scuttle butts over to pond number three. Now this pond here is definitely the most beautiful out of all the ones we've fished so far. Y'all got a sneak peek. Now you really get to see it on the drone angle. It is gorgeous. We have crystal clear water. It looks like the cows are only bothering that side over there, so we're gonna not fish that side. But I saw tons of bluegill as I walked the bank this way to get to these cattails. Tons of open water out there, at least more open than this little section is here. Lots of really hard edges, definite edges in the grass to fish. I'm excited. There could be no bass in this one. I doubt that, but also uh, there could be some giants. So we're gonna put down the worm, because who needs stinking worm? And uh, grab a frog. And it looks like my battery is not working. No, it is, okay. Man, this feels like I'm actually fishing a public lake right now. Beautiful, beautiful cover. It's kind of the thing is that like, I wanna take what I've learned at both ponds so far, one and two, that, you know, fish feeding on bluegill, that they're around the shallows or they're in deep holes, but this one might be different. Nope, it's not, it's not different. Ugh. It's just like pond number two. There we go. Bring it in. All right, success. This is stinking awesome. Just a little guy. But frog, ugh, top of the mouth. Love it. Thank you, friend. All righty. So there's going to be fish out there in the middle. I like it. I like it a lot. Might be some giants too. Who knows? All right. As y'all can see, we just have we have so many more pads. Oh, I had a fish, but it was. I still have one. Okay, <laughs> I, I had a small fish. Gosh, man, there are so many fish in this pond. 
Gee, we got some numbers in this one. It's kind of crazy. Let's get the water out of here. This frog is full of water from all the, the bites we just got. I want to stay away from that. Well, you know what? Our goal is to catch fish. I'm going to cast over there. Gosh! Dang, son! Come on, water ski in. Okay, so far every bite we've gotten has been this size. Ow, gosh. Single scoop ice cream cone bass. Not big ones. All right. At least we're catching fish though. Pond number three. It's beautiful, but where's the big ones? Where's the big ones, huh? I'm trying to find the best angle here to set the camera up to get the best looking, best looking hook sets. If I, if I put the rod here, yeah, we're fine. Sometimes on ponds, you gotta weave through small ones to get to the big ones. And then sometimes you catch the big one right away and your whole day is downhill from there. And that's how pond number two was. It was downhill from there. All right. What a zing, what a zinger. Let's see. Hey, if y'all made it all the way this far and aren't subscribed, geez, you ever made it really far. Go ahead and smash that button for me. Oh, what a cast. Oh, man. Holy smokes, what a, what a bomb. Long bombing cast. It's kind of interesting that ponds have different personalities, even though they're right next to each other. Just because they were stocked at the same time and they're all catfish ponds doesn't mean they're all identical. And maybe they did it differently on purpose. They put some cattails in some pond, some, uh, it it's, must be a different species than that one. That one's only on the bank. This one's out there in the middle. But man, this would be a really fun pond about a month or two ago when fish were pre-spawn spawning because they'd be all around this stuff here. They'd be all around these cattails. Get your kayak out here. Man, would not be a bad time. All right, last cast here. And I'm gonna, gonna keep moving down the bank. I'm glad y'all have been enjoying the uncuts. They've all done relatively well, view-wise. So thank y'all for watching. Super grateful and appreciative. And also the, the regular instructional content. Y'all have been loving that too. So that's been fun to see all my storyline type content. Also getting views and doing well. So I really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you want to drop a comment down below, if you have a really specific video idea you want to see me make, let me know. And I'll try to oblige. Try to marry J, Mary J. Blige. Is that a singer? I think it's a singer. All right. Keep on moving. Moving down the pond we go. Good angle right here. Better straight whack one. Now, the, my, my, my techniques could change a little bit at this pond. I could be throwing, you know, a little flipping bait, a little punch bait, because I can definitely flip to definitely this edge here to punch it. I mean, I, ho I hope y'all can see this on my chest mount. I'm going to zoom in. I hope There's no way y'all can't. That's totally a canopy underneath the grass. So I could totally flip and punch this stuff, make long flips to the the reeds and cattails that are on the edge probably catch some fish doing that but i think my time is better spent throwing a frog i'm not sure how many i mean like we're trying to catch big ones now that i have a seven pounder i'm trying to catch big ones i'm not sure how many of them are sitting in two feet of water underneath a little mat of grass I think they're gonna mostly be way out there. If y'all want to see, uh, you know, if you're if you're if you're watching me doing what I'm doing right now, and you're thinking, Tyler, I want to learn how to fish like that. Well, I've got videos talking about how to fish around grass. I will leave that down below in the video description, as well as my topwater frog masterclass. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll even throw a third video down there. That is when to throw a frog versus a popper. Those are all videos that I think, you know, the, the, the content, the information I'm using in today's fishing 
that I think uh, if you're just watching and you're relatively new to bass fishing, I think this, oh gosh, that was a bass. I think that those videos could be helpful to you. So I'll leave those down below. I'm not sure if that was a big one or not. So I'm gonna make an ultra cast. Ultra vez. You did not get hooked, so you should still be in the area. Unless I scared you. Doing a little follow-up action here. Nope. All right. And you're a little too far away to throw a worm as a follow-up. All right. Let's get a bomb cast way out there. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. That's my farthest cast of the day. Oh, gosh. I had a big one, too. I just had a big one. Load way out there. Kind of working my frog back in. Don't want to burn it in because there could be fish here that I would miss. Definitely going to have to make another cast way out there. All right, let's see how, how accurate I can be. Get all the water out. Oh, gosh, darn it. That was not accurate at all. As a matter of fact, I'm glad I backlashed. Save me from going down the wrong, the wrong path there. Okay. Such a hard thing to get a frog that far out there. All right. Oh yes, oh gosh, dang it. It was well on its way. So hard to whip a frog that long. Not easy. Keep trying though. I'm gonna get it. When I get it, what a glorious occasion that will be. Oh yes, oh yeah. Gosh, dang it. Ah, I missed him again. I'm reel and slow to make sure this, oh well, it happened. I can say my line doesn't get tangled, but it got tangled anyways. Oh. Oh, dang it. Gosh, got twisted again. When you set the hook and your braid flies back at you, it's just bad news. Spells instant bad news. Oh, let's see if I can make it this time, baby. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Cast. Come on. All that work and you're not there? What? Lame. Lame-o. Lame-o, lame-o, lame-o. All right, one more cast. Uh-oh, we got cows coming. Oh, shoot. The cows are on their way. Boys and girls, probably gonna ask me for food. I'm gonna tell them, cows, I don't have any food. It's like I get an area fired up and I, and I miss three or four bites and then they shut off. Oh, no. Oh, the cows are coming. I gotta reel in to be prepared for whatever. Oh, never mind. They were coming, and then I started reeling in and they got scared. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm seeing here. Run, moo cows. All right, there's your little wildlife break. Let's go ahead and make a few little short casts around this stuff here. Oh no. Oh no, the cows are going to my truck. No. Okay, we're good. We're good. Thought that I was about to get, have to go get a cow, a hook out of a cow's face. They're running somewhere. I feel like they're, they're getting fed. Yeah, all the cows over there are running too. Yeah, they're totally going to get fed somewhere. It's feed time. They on that feed bag, baby. That seven pound bass and these cows are part of the same family. They all, they all a bunch of cows on that feed. Oh, baby cow. A cute baby cow. I just, I really believe there's a big one in here. It's, this has all the, all the markings that would make a big bass. Tons of bluegill, really clear water the whole way through. Looks like some depth out there. And that cow got close. 
That's a big old, that's a big old milker. Big old milk cow. When you make a cast that long, any rod shorter than like seven six makes it really hard to sweep that line and get a hook set in. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I, I thought this place was about to be lights out when I got those small fish back to back and then nothing. Weird. Just made four beautiful casts to no fish. So let's keep trying. Holy cow, what a cow casting off half my spool. This is a deep spool. Nothing, man. What the heck? This is lame. Yeah, there's bluegill beds. I'm gonna I'm gonna work the bank a little bit here because I'm not getting nothing out here. This is weird. Does not make any sense to me, but you know what? It also makes perfect sense because they were they were scooed up every place I've caught them. So the fact that I can't just catch them randomly, one-off fish, makes sense. You gotta find a little concentration of them. You'll get two or three bites back to back. I just can't miss them all like I've been like I've been doing. How quickly your thoughts on a body of water can change. I thought that three was gonna be awesome. And now I'm kind of looking forward to getting to pond four. Yeah, we're gonna take the Sony camera off, walk down this bank, find us some bluegill eaters, and that's that. Gosh, it is just so shallow and clear. It's beautiful, I'll admit. Water's water's gorgeous. I'm just not sure if the bass are this shallow right here. Oh my goodness, gorgeous bluegill bed. That thing's straight white. Gosh, there's gotta be bass. If y'all are curious what color of frog I throw, it's my favorite favorite color. This here is, oop, I got some fish. Uh, slime, what is it, not slime. Some face skin. I'm gonna hook there. This is, uh, I believe it's <clears throat> perch or crappie. It's my favorite one. It's kind of a grayish, kind of greenish. So like it's, it's a really good overall frog color for really any color water, any water conditions, any sky conditions. Don't really care if it's windy or calm. I don't care if it's sunny or cloudy. I'm throwing this color a lot. I do throw black. I do throw straight white certain times, but to me, it's really hard to beat this color. Okay, well, we've entered the part of the pond. You'll see in the drone shot here that it's just sinking matted grass and it looks it looks shallower underneath i still see a i still see a, a mat like a, a canopy but it's not near as deep still lots of bluegill though i'm gonna make cast all these holes and it's just now also dawning on me that i've i've noted all these things in my well as i'm talking to the camera that i'm gonna get with the drone and i uh, forget them <laughs> I already forgot what I was supposed to get upon one and two. I think just wherever I caught fish, I'll get drone shots of that. This video is going to be long, I know it. Three plus hours long for sure. Because we're only, we're not even halfway done yet. Ugh. But from what I can tell online, the other ponds might not even be fishable. I think ponds one through three were definitely the most fishable ponds. Yeah, matter of fact, I think I'm looking to ponds five and six, and they're not even open. Like there's no there's no open water. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this out of the pond. It's just it's so much grass. So much grass. I'm gonna go back, fish the other side. Definitely not worth my time. Over here. Alright. Now fishing just a bunch of cattails in open water. Come on, big ones. Where are you at? Let's finish off pond three with some giants. Hopefully. Not gonna promise nothing, but I hope we can do it. 
And I think we can. Wish there was more stuff for me to talk about. There's like not, it's kind of kind of monotonous to a certain point. Throwing a frog, trying to find the holes. I think catching big ones helps. Catching big ones helps the monotony. Whew. And I think it's also just so hot, my brain is starting to fry a little bit. Looking forward to getting in that AC after this challenge. Hope. Gosh, darn it. Had one. You know what? We got some clear, clear area that I got that bite in. Let's go ahead and throw the worm back. Perfect. The worm fall, watch my line. Start reeling back in, let it fall. Hop it, let it fall, just like a worm. No swimming action, just hop and let it fall. Nothing? Holy moly. Crazy. Almost can't, almost can't believe that. It just got a bite and nothing on the follow-up. Okay, let's go through there. Each of these ponds really does have their own personality. This one seems to not have a whole lot of big ones. Almost every bite I'm missing because they're, they're all small bass. Besides maybe one bite that I got that was bigger. And the same things that I tried to figure out at the other... Gosh, darn it! It's like they're, they're at the very end of my cast. Like, how am I supposed to get those fish in? Okay, here we go. Kind of missed the cast back, but... Oh my god, he missed it again! Holy cow! Just eat the dang frog. Man. Unreal. Okay, well I know that there's fish in that area. I've proven that in this pond they're schooled up, so we're gonna make another cast. Way over there, great cast. Start retrieving it back in. That was actually not a great cast. Now that I and working it. Yeah, not a good cast. Let's give it another try. There we go. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Don't do this to me again. Don't show me where you're at and then leave. Dang it. That's what they're stinking doing. Holy cow. Ah. <sighs> They are attacking and retreating. These, you know what these bass are doing? These bass are ding-dong ditching me. That's exactly what they're doing. They're making a, they're, they're biting. They're saying, ding-dong, somebody's home. You, you know, room service. And then they are bolting, laughing as they go. And I'm, I'm catching them on my ring alarm. All right. Be that way, fish. Gosh. All righty. Let's move on down, I guess. Frustrating. Really frustrating. Oh, and I feel a whole bunch of stickers about to get in my heel. They're just not quite there yet. They haven't moved enough in my shoe. But they're going to poke me eventually. Going to poke me eventually. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. They just have to... I gotta kinda get their angles worked out and eventually they get you. Ouch, gosh. If I've learned anything from this uncut day, it's that I need to invest in a pair of rubber boots. Or just boots in general. Don't even have to be rubber. Cause you know what, rubber boots would've been hot today. I'm just such a fan of gym shoes, man. I don't wanna wear boots. Man, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so close to giving up on this pond. 
Looks were absolutely deceiving here. I thought this one was going to be the best one of all. And it's wound up being the worst. Yeah, I got a lot of bites, but no size and also missed a whole lot of them. You know what? I'm going to give a big old cast out there. Perfect. Gosh, there he is. There he is. Oh my gosh. It's a nice one. Oh, how am I supposed to get him in? How am I supposed to get him in? Oh, yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, you can only winch on him so much. And that, that fish bit about 62 yards away from me. Oh, whatever. Whatever, man. Frustrating. Oh, let's try it again. Try it again. Great. Just gonna reel it fast. Hope one charges it. Sets the hook on itself. Here we go. Gosh, thank you. They're all small. They're all small. I swear. <sighs> Stinking small fish. Come on, long cast out there in the middle. It must get somewhat deeper out there if that's where all my bites are coming. Because these are not bluegill eaters. Oh gosh. Oh my god, I had another bite. Son of a gun, man. These are not big ones. I mean, big ones rarely ever just kind of swirl at it and miss it. I mean, they chomp it just like my seven pounder did. <sighs> big fish are never lame. It's always the small fish that are lame. Holy cow, what a cast. I'm gonna get a bite on that cast. And it's gonna be the fight of my life. But here's the deal. This is really the only technique that you can really even do at this sort of pond, which is not bad. I'm not gonna complain. I like catching them on a frog, but it is nice sometimes to be able to throw other deals. You know, pitch a worm, throw a chatterbait, maybe a little bit of summertime drop shot. And at these bodies of water, frog is your only option. Okay. Got him. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Just got a water ski. Water ski. Water ski. Oh, get in here. You know what? I'll let you dig in your grass. I'll let you dig in there. Good. At least I'm not losing you this time. All right. Oh, man. Oh, it's tiring. Thank you, friend. You have proven to me that there ain't no big ones, at least not many of them, in this pond. Because even you looked okay size when you bit. But no, you are just a little one pounder. But even though it's a one pounder, still deserves to be shown with some love. All right, we've proven pond number three's got little danks, even though it's beautiful. We'll see y'all at pond number four. So for our fourth pond, we have one that really looks similar to number two. And you know, it's, it's got same exact grass. It's got some pads, got some openings, but we do have quite a lot of cattails on the bank here that make bank fishing practically impossible all down this way and in this corner. So we're gonna have to fish this open corner here, see if we get a bite make really as many casts as we can. I see a whole bunch of openings. Oh, oh gosh. I just saw a fish swirl around these pads. Could have been a turtle. It was something though. Uh, I see a good opening lane over here. I see openings out here, some openings over here. Man, I almost, I almost want a punch just to, tr just to try it. You know, like we only got a few ponds left. And I'm just gonna kind of give you all a sneak peek, not even sure if we can fish ponds five and six. They are so full of cattails, it's crazy. I'm not even sure why they planted that many in that pond, to be honest. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's not even like duck land. Like you can't do anything there. It's just useless swamp. 
But this area here looks decent. Might be a few fish in this corner here. I just really thought eventually I'd find some stuff like Pond 1 that had, you know, shallow fish eating bluegills, and I really didn't. It's kind of like that one was in post-spawn time period, and the rest of these here have all been full-blown summer with, with uh, casting in a, in a deeper water, looking for the holes. That wasn't the case of the first pond. First pond was more post-spawn. But I've got faith. Got faith there's some giants in this one. I see something beelining to it right now. Oh, little guy. Once again, when you set the hook and reel on loose braid, it'll do that to you. Gosh, it just ties a stinking knot. Thank you. One of the worst parts about braid. You gotta make sure you reel it in slow. Okay, that was little guy. Not what we want. Another bomb of a cast. I'm just gonna reel it fast. I mean, if I get a if I if I get a blow up from a big one, and he misses it, I can just go back there and, and fish it slow. But I don't want to deal with small fish. If that's what this pond's got. Boom. And I can't tell if my legs are just so itchy from all the stickers or if they're actually sunburned. But they don't feel good. Whatever it is. But I do it for you guys. For the views. For the subscribers. Oh. I scared something. Scared something. Something's got scared silly. Nope, he don't want it. Didn't want nothing to do with it, huh? That was a nice spit right there. A lot of flum from the carrots I've been eating. All right, let's get a good cast towards them kitty tails. <clears throat> Some good little open pocket by them, I think. Yeah, I've, I've got a small fish right now. Let go, thank you. Come on, man, this is frustrating. It's also totally possible that, you know, th th these ponds all have the same caliber of fish in them. I just got lucky with the time that I caught that big one and the rest of the big ones are all just in the, the deepest possible section, even if it's only six inches deeper, it may be deeper out there somewhere and they're just hunkered down at, at the bottom. Maybe they fed this morning. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that fish. He was small. Ah, this is frustrating. Let's go that way. Yeah, I think I think I caught them all. I looked at Bass Forecast. I caught them all during the, the major feeding time where I had the best flurry during that time. And since then, it's kind of been downhill. I'm hitting that post-spawn early summer funk. Except for that fish. That was nice of him. Thank you, buddy. Come on. And I don't think you're any size. Nope. Not a big one. Just a wee little guy. But hey, you know what? It's a fish. And that's a success at pond number four. Oh my goodness. Thank you, friend. And you know, if, if that's the size we're dealing with, I don't even want to punch. I don't even want to punch. <sighs> we're starting to lose some strands here. All right, 15 fish in at least on this thing. Proud of, proud of this frog, it's lasted a while. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of reaching the point now where I just want to go back to where I caught fish. I'm going to show you some drone shots of pond four and five right now, or five and six. And man, you can't fish them. That's the problem. They are totally, uh, I mean, I don't even know if they're deep enough really to hold a bass. It looks like from here, it looks like the water's super shallow in there. So there's not a single bass in those two. I'm going to go to the other side of pond three here for the last few minutes. It looks like there's some good little openings. Maybe I'll catch a big one. And if not, we might just, you know, end with some fish catches here. So we're going to leave the big Sony, head back to pond three and uh, catch some more fish for you guys, for the views. Nope. Oh, yep. Little guy. 
<laughs> oh, he got off. I just didn't even feel like setting the hook. <sighs> and look what I did. Look what he did to me. Got me wrapped up. I can't tell if that's a plane or thunder. That's got to be a plane. Hey, here's some vibrations coming from the horizon. It's got to be a plane. Oh, gosh. Okay. Right as I said, no fire ants. Well, that pile's dead. There's nothing there. Pond ain't. Yeah, slacklined him. <laughs> slacklined and then burned. Turn and burn, baby. All right, there's our our first of two. I really think these are northern strain bass. They don't look like Florida's to me, especially that seven I caught. Don't look like Florida's. How are we doing? Good. Let's keep on going. One more fish. Hopefully, it's a big one. If it's not a big one, I'm not setting the hook. Oh my goodness. What a day. That day really consisted of everything you want as an angler. A little bit of challenge, a little bit of uh, struggle, a little bit of hardship, but also tons of fun fish catches. There were failures, there were successes. I would say that makes for a great uncut video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you wanna see more uncut stuff, I will leave my previous uncut right over here. Another awesome topwater frog fishing day. And if topwater frog fishing isn't really your thing, you wanna see a different type of uncut, I will leave a second one up here in this corner, a little kayak uncut with a little bit of chatter bait and a little vibrating jig. Uh, both really cool videos. The longer y'all stay on my channel, the better it does on YouTube. So I'd appreciate it if y'all would watch one of those two videos. My name's Tyler and we'll see you guys next time right here on Uncut.